What's up? It's your boy Michael, the one, the only, the Iron Horse Historian. Today, we will be discussing the EMD SD7. The EMD SD7 made its official debut in early 1952. Both the SD7 and GP7 shared the same prime mover and horsepower output. The two extra axles of the SD7, however, allowed for better traction and better weight distribution thanks to its flexi-coil trucks. These trucks also allowed for almost double the tractive effort of the GP7 at 75,000 pounds compared to the 40,000 pounds of the GP7. Inside, the SD7 came built with a 567B 16-cylinder engine a GM D22 main generator, a Delco A8102 auxiliary generator, a GMD14 alternator, a Gardner Denver compressor, and Westinghouse air brakes, all of which was encased in a locomotive shell and rode on two flexi-coil six-wheel trucks. At a top speed of 65 miles per hour, a starting tractive effort of 90,800 pounds, and a continuous tractive effort of 75,000 pounds. They weighed in at 360,000 pounds and measured in at 60 feet 8.5 inches. Depending on the railroad, the SD7 came out with many different kinds of horns. For instance, on the Southern Pacific, their SD7s came out with Nathan M5424s, which were later changed to Nathan P3s. The Great Northern used both Leslie A125s and Leslie A200s. A total of 16 railroads operated the SD7. These include, but are not limited to, the Great Northern, the Baltimore and Ohio, and the Bessemer and Lake Erie. Out of all 16, the railroad with the largest fleet of SD7s was Southern Pacific, with a total of 43. Next came the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy with 37, and last but not least, the Milwaukee Road came in third with 24 total units. While the railroads, at least in the early 1950s, preferred four-axle locomotives, the SD7 still enjoyed excellent service careers. For instance, the Southern Pacific figured out that the SD7 was perfect for its stiff grades. In fact, Many would remain in service until the Southern Pacific merged with the Union Pacific in 1996. Despite being 71 years old, as of 2023, a few SD7s remain in service. Some have been rebuilt into SD19-1s for the Columbia Basin Railroad. They can also be seen working grain elevators in states such as North Dakota and Illinois. However, while many have been given a second chance, some such as those owned by the Dakota Southern remain in storage, unlikely to be fired up anytime soon. Many have been given new leases on life. Several SD7s have made it into preservation. These include, but are not limited to, Central of Georgia number 201 at the Virginia Museum of Transportation in Roanoke, Virginia, Burlington Northern number 6008, which was repainted back into its original colors, can be found at the Minnesota Transportation Museum in St. Paul, Minnesota, and Southern Pacific number 1518, which can be found at the Illinois Railroad Museum in Union, Illinois. 